Hello, this is Dan from Pale Wizard. We have some great news for Black Sabbath fans today uh, with the announcement of a new box set which covers the Tony Martin era from 1989 to 1995. Now, as many of you will know, the Tony Martin era actually starts a little bit before that with the introduction of the Eternal Idol album, which was in 1987. Now, unfortunately, that album isn't included in this box set. And I would assume that's because that was the last album, I believe, that Sabbath released on Warner Brothers. So I'm assuming there's some kind of licensing issue with that. So this box set covers the albums from The Headless Cross, which was in uh, 1989, all the way through to the uh, the last album that they did with Tony, Ar Tony Martin, which was Forbidden. So Black Sabbath, Anu Domini, 1989 to 1995, is due to be released on May the 31st through BMG. It's gonna come in a CD box set and a vinyl box set, although I understand that the vinyl box set won't include the bonus tracks which are included on the CD one. Now, I myself count myself as a big fan of the Tony Martin era, and I often think that it's an era that gets forgotten about when people talk about Black Sabbath. And in fact, in many of the Black Sabbath uh, autobiographies or biographies that I've read, or the documentaries that I've seen, they completely disregard this whole era. There's probably many reasons for that. Some of them probably relate to Sharon Osbourne's uh, supposed ownership of the Black Sabbath name. I believe there was an incident uh, where she acquired the rights to the uh, Sabbath uh, trademark. And when Sabbath made a brief reunion uh, for the live album back in the 90s, they almost acted as if, as if this never happened. Now, as some of you may know, Tony Martin joined the band in a very tumultuous time in the Black Sabbath canon. Already they'd gone through Ozzy, they had Dio for a couple of albums, great albums. Then Dio left, um, and then we had Ian Gillan come in the band. That was a very uh, short-lived experience with Born Again. Uh, after Ian Gillan, I believe they had Glenn Hughes, or was it Ray Gillan? Uh, I, I get mixed up with that, but I think it was Glenn Hughes and then Glenn Hughes left because of his alcohol problems. Ray Gillen filled in on the tour. Uh, then Ray Gillen um, initially recorded all the vocals for the Eternal Idol album, an album which I really like by the way. Uh, and before that album was released, Ray Gillen ended up leaving the band um, and then he went on to be in a band such as Badlands with uh, people such as Jakey Lee who uh, conversely had a history of Ozzy Osbourne uh, and then Tony Martin joined the band to re-record all of the vocals on the Eternal Idol album um, and that album kind of represented a bit of a comeback really for Black Sabbath I mean obviously there's always going to be those people who don't accept new vocalists in a band like Black Sabbath and indeed there's lots of people who still don't count the Dio era um, as part of the Sabbath canon and admittedly, I used to be one of those people uh, back in the day when I was first getting into metal and Sabbath and bands like that. Um, and I was in for such a shock when I finally listened to those Dio albums, how good they were. Uh, in fact, I would put those uh, Dio era Sabbath albums right at the top, uh, certainly in the top five. And so those same people probably have a bit of scorn towards the Tony Martin era. And it was probably about 10 years ago that I finally gave the Tony Martin era um, uh, a go myself. And I have to say, I love some of the material. It's, some of it's a bit inconsistent, but there's some absolutely fantastic songs and riffs. And obviously, Black Sabbath is never about Ozzy Osbourne. It's never about Ian Gillan, Dio, Tony Martin. It's about Tony Iommi. Iommi is Sabbath. He's the only consistent part in the Sabbath backstory. Obviously, Geezer Butler was a big fundamental part of Black Sabbath, uh, Black Sabbath as well. But it's only Tony Iommi who's been there right from day one. And what we have in these Tony Martin albums is some fantastic songwriting, some massive Iommi riffs. So if we go from the start, we've got uh, this box that includes the Headless Cross. So that, that album had uh, Jeff Nichols on keyboards. And I believe Jeff, Jeff Nichols originally came to the band in the, in the Dio era, adding some keyboards and kind of fattening out the sound. And he's been a bit of an unsung hero in the Sabbath backstory as well. And he sadly died, I think, in 2017. And also on uh, the Headless Cross album, we have the introduction of Cozy Powell on drums, the legendary Cozy Powell. Uh, obviously, he's been in bands such as uh, Jeff Beck, Rainbow, um, 
Got my notes here. Michael Schenker, Gary Moore, Graham Bonnet. Cozy Powell himself sadly died in 1998, not too far from uh, where I am right now. And we had Lawrence Cottle on bass. And I believe Lawrence would only be on this album. So the Headless Cross had some massive highlights, including um, the title track itself, uh, Devil and Daughter. It was a really strong album. The title track, Headless Cross, has one of the greatest vocals uh, in metal, in my opinion. Tony Martin had such a range. He could do uh, the Dio uh, style vibrato, histrionics, operatic stuff. But he also had a lot of soul to his voice as well. He didn't have that blues inflection that Ozzy had. But Tony Martin definitely brought a musicality to the band. And indeed, after Ozzy Osbourne, I think he's the second longest serving vocalist of Sabbath. So after the Headless Cross, which was a big return to form, I don't know how that translated into sales, but then came Tear. Again, we had Cozy Powell on drums. We had Neil Murray coming in on the bass. Uh, and again, Jeff Nichols on keyboards. Now, Tear was, uh, for me, is a really great album. It has some real epic sounding, war driven, mythology kind of songs. And I think Tony Martin was really stretching himself as a lyricist as well as a vocalist. Songs such as uh, Jerusalem, The Sabbath Stones, The Fantastic uh, Lawmaker. They're, they're, they're really uh, big highlights in, uh, for me in the Sabbath story. And again, it's, it's great that this box set is bringing light to these songs. Now both those albums, I believe, Headless Cross and Tear, have been remastered for this box set. Now these albums have been um, unavailable for such a long time. Uh, and I don't, I'm not sure what the reason was for their deletion from the official catalogue, but it's fantastic that they're now getting a little bit of love um, so more people can hear them. Now after the Tear album, uh, Sabbath reunited with the vocalist Dio for the Dehumanizer album. Um, and that was seen as a bit of a classic reunion lineup. Unfortunately, that kind of ended in tears. And what did they do? They got back on the phone to Tony Martin and asked him to come back in again. And that seems to be a bit of a, a recurring theme for Tony Martin. He's always the consistent guy who is like the afterthought, which I think is, is real shame really, because he really does add uh, something quite uh, musical and theatrical to their sound. And so after that dehumanized round, which kind of ended in a bit of a disappointment, uh, they came back with Cross Purposes. And Cross Purposes uh, featured Geezer Butler on bass. Again, Jeff Nichols uh, stayed around on the keyboards. Uh, Cozy Powell uh, wasn't available this time. I'm not sure what he was doing at the time, but they had Bobby Wondanelli come in on drums. Um, he's been in Rainbow, again, Quiet Riot, uh, Blue, uh, Blue Oyster Cult. I, I would say this is a really underrated album, Cross Purposes. The problem with a lot of these albums at the time is the lead singles they were going with were kind of ballads and that was putting off a lot of the metal crowd. But if you dig deep into these albums, there's lots of really big, robust songs. Highlights for me would be Eyewitness, uh, The Hand That Rocks The Cradle uh, and the song Cross of Thorns. Really strong tracks. And then we come to the last and possibly the most interesting inclusion on this box set. So like I said, this box set covers all the Tony Martin era albums aside from the Eternal Idol. And the last one, which is considered by many to be the worst Sabbath album, is Forbidden. Now, I personally wouldn't say it's my uh, least favorite. I think my least favorite Sabbath album was the last one they did with Ozzy, which was 13. However, Forbidden, it definitely has a bit of a ropey sound. It was produced by Ernie C uh, from Body Count. And in fact, it actually includes Ice-T from Body Count making an appearance on the album and it's not great. Of all the kind of rap metal uh, crossover instances, this isn't the best. It's quite cheesy, it's quite badly produced. It's a bit ropey around the edges. I think the whole thing was done in quite a rush. I did read somewhere that the whole album was tracked in 10 days. Uh, so that might explain why the album doesn't quite live up to the Sabbath name. However, Tony Iommi has apparently remixed the entire album which I'm really fascinated to hear. Because, again, if you dig into this album, there is some really good material. It's let down by the, by the thin, kind of a little bit ropey around the edges production. I never really rated Ernie C. As much as he's had a great distinguished, distinguished career, I never really rated his own production. In fact, those um, initial body count albums haven't aged that well. I think if they were re-recorded now, they could be quite, um, 
quite cool, but, but I don't think he really knew what he was doing with metal and recording metal. So Tony Iommi has remixed and remastered the entire Forbidden album, and I'm fascinated to hear what he's done with that. So what we have here is a celebration of the Tony Martin era albums. I'm really excited to see how these sound, how they look. One thing I really like about the Forbidden album was the artwork. I thought it was really cool. I don't see many people talking about it, but I always thought that was a really cool piece of artwork. It was unfortunately let down by the, the music inside it. I'll probably go for the CD box set as I'm not too bothered about big vinyl box sets. I don't really have the space in my house at the moment. Um, but also I'm interested to see the bonus tracks and I'm really interested to see how the remasters and the remix sound uh, compared to the originals. I've, I have all the originals on CD, uh, so it'd be really interesting to see what these sound like. But more than that, I think it's great that the Tony Martin era uh, is being celebrated and revered in this way. And also uh, the great Jeff Nichols, Cozy Powell. It's an all-star lineup really of musicians. And for those Sabbath uh, fans out there who've never really given these albums a chance, I think this is a great opportunity to really dig deep because uh, you might find some absolutely stellar songs amongst maybe some not quite so consistent numbers. But yeah, I'm really excited about this. I'll be interested to hear what you think about this, uh, this new box set that's coming out. Like I said, May 31st on BMG. Um, it comes with a tour, replica, concert book, a 60 page book with photos, artwork and liner notes and a headless cross poster. So I'm really interested to see how this box set sounds, how it looks, really interested to get my hands on it. When I do, I'll do another video like this. So it's Black Sabbath Anno Domini 1989 to 1995, May the 31st, released through BMG. Please let me know your comments and uh, we'll see you next time.